Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video for you. And we're going to be continuing on with the very basic tutorial series. And very close to finishing it out. So for those who want to know, this is the book that we've been using. Now, some of the things I didn't mention is in the back of this book, after we cover the next chapter, which will be on sound, it goes right into the appendix and it also covers some of the commands. So maybe I might go over some of those. Um, we'll just see how much time there is and how close we are to getting this other project started. So, um, so this video is obviously going to go more into depth, uh, stuff we've probably been waiting on. So you've already seen some of the highlights of things I've already been doing with um, Sprite. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit interesting, maybe create a demo before this uh, video is over. So hope you guys enjoy me and enjoy the show. So in the earlier video, we covered um, pet acts, see graphic characters on the screen, you know, screen memory. Uh, the poke statement and just animating Axie characters and as I mentioned what we're going to be doing in this one we're going to be talking about sprites and sprites offer the ability to move a graphic object on the screen without changing the background um, so basically there's no erasing involved or anything um, they're also known as programmable movable objects and this is all according to the book um, sprites can have 16 colors on them um, they became popular by many other systems, but commonly they were referred to as sprites. And the Commodore 64 uses the VIC chip, which is the video interface controller, to um, put these uh, sprites on the screen and allow also the graphics modes like the borders and other different basically things that go on in your computer to be controlled by the video chip itself. <clears throat> Um, also, the sprites themselves can pass over background. Um, they can collide with each other, background objects. And there's just a lot of different things you'll notice that sprites can do. And you can obviously move them around the screen horizontally and vertically. And there's basically other things here. I'm probably not going to go into all this example. Like I said, I'll probably take it. When I have this article done, I'll just post it on um, GitHub for you guys to read it and everything. I think I already have the recent one up there, but I'll upload the more recent one if you want to read through it. And then basically, uh, sprites themselves. Um, an evaluation of the screen, which is actually 64,000 pixels made up of the screen, which is 320 by 200. Um, that's 320 horizontal by 200 vertical. That makes up the 64,000 pixels. Each pixel itself um, on the character itself contains 64 pixels. And the sprite, of course, contains the 40 by 25 columns. Um, I had to calculate that, or I said 40 by 20. Yeah, 40 by that doesn't sound right to me. I think it's 21 or 24 by 21. I was looking at the other one. So 24 times 21 is 504. So it's 504 pixels that can be occupied in a sprite itself. Okay, so obviously we'll get on to designing a sprite here. And I did actually write that there, 504 8 bits per byte. Okay, um, we're going to basically learn how to draw a sprite here in just a minute. Um, just some other things to understand that each square that you're um, occupying on the screen, think of it like um, graph paper, for example. If you have graph paper on the screen here, these are the individual squares are occupied. And the sprite themselves um, can t contain, you know, eight by eight by eight. <clears throat> so essentially, <clears throat> you're taking eight by eight by eight, which is 24. So you're basically taking, it occupies the same length of three different characters going in, um, I guess, a horizontal direction or whatever. So if you just take the 3 times 8, or I'm sorry, 8 times 3, you get the 24 for the, um, the total. And then also they go, um, is it 8 by 8 the other way too? I don't know. But anyways, um, we'll, we'll go over that as we draw a sprite and we'll come across that more. Um, um, the other thing here is when we're drawing the sprite, we want to label it in this order, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Um, and these 8 columns represent the 8 pixels that refer to the byte of memory. Um, these are also raised to the power of each number, so if you wanted to figure out what a number is, you just raise it to its power, basically. Um, so, um, essentially, um, what we're going to do first is, um, I'm trying to move ahead as quickly as I can, because I don't want to have to hold, read this whole tutorial. I've got sprites memorized and everything, but I still want to probably create a structured approach to this, and I know I'm going to get probably hammered on some of the things I'm saying, so excuse me on that. But you should all be familiar with sprites by now. Basically, those little background objects, and you can instantly, I can show you just an example outside the book here. You can instantly throw one on the screen here very quickly. As soon as I don't get an error message. Just by setting that value to one that enables the sprites. And then you can instantly bring a sprite on the screen with something like this. 
and you have to actually find any net. You can just position it on the screen here since these are set to zero by default and you can instantly make it appear. So now we got a little square occupied on the screen here. I'm just going to move it over a little bit so we can kind of see it out of the way of the text. And these are registers I'm using right here, 53248. These are memory registers built into your Commodore 64. Uh, they're directly controlled through the chips themselves. Um, the RAM chips occupy the memory. So the important thing to understand is that registers are defined to certain parts of your sprites. So not every memory register in your computer is going to be used for the sprites. Some will be used for different tasks in your computer to do with the disk drive, you know, just many other different things that are controlled, the screen, keyboard, all that such stuff. If you want to know more about that, in many times I've showed it, get this book, Map in the Comic 64, get the PDF online. It's got all the example of all the registers and everything you'll need to know about the sprites. And if you go to like page, um, what is it, like uh, the, right here it says, um, you see that VIC2, SID, IO devices, color, RAM, and ROM? That'll have everything you need for the sprites right there. So, you just saw me enable a sprite. This is how you enable multiple sprites on the screen. We'll probably go over that later. I just wanted to kind of, you know, make it a little bit quicker here instead of going through this entire tutorial. Um, make some errors myself here. So we kind of raise this. So this is basically raising it two to the power of the number 128 or seven to the power of two. If you need to raise the number to the power, by the way, you just set the power key, which I'll probably need to research because I probably forgot where it was. Oh, I know where it is. I'm thinking of the, the Atari. It's right here. It's, you hit the delete key. It brings the power up like that. And I'll raise the number to the power there. And that's essentially how you configure out, you know, what a number is to its power, basically. I see some pretty wild stuff going on here. Okay, so um, what we're basically doing is we're raising the bits to the power, by the way. We're not raising just anything. So here we'd be raising 6 to the power of 2 and so on. So anyways, um, and this part doesn't make sense here. I need to get rid of this. I don't know why I did this, but anyways. So um, also these registers, um, they're contained pointers. You saw me do that a second earlier here with the memory location 2040. That's actually a pointer, and it shows you where that sprite is located in memory. And we'll go over that a little bit later here. Um, actually, that's coming up soon, it looks like. Um, what you want to do is you always want to find a safe place in memory to store your sprite. And remember, this is the sprite here. So this is the one I'm seeing. It's 24 by 22, and it contains 504 pixels. And this sprite data can be manipulated to look like a game character. You've seen them many common in the, the game. Some of them have sprites stacked on top of each other. Nintendo actually had four sprites, one on top of the each other, or two on top of each, each other. And what we're going to basically do is we're going to alter this sprite. But we can actually do that without any data statements, too. I'll show you real time how to do this inside of the memory itself here. So if I go here real quick and just clear my screen. Actually, I should have just set that in my little program here. We're going to get ready to write a program here real soon anyway. Whoops. Okay, so now we have a little screen here. I just want to use that to clear the screen with, but I'm going to show you real time. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to change this memory location here, 12288, and then we're going to point in memory to where it's located. Um, now, a little bit about that when we go into this memory location. We're using 12288 since it has just enough area to define our sprites. Um, you can have up to uh, it mentioned eight, you can have up to eight sprites on the screen with eight individual colors, and you can learn a lot more about that in that book. You can also go into the programmer's reference guide. There's a lot of good books you can learn about, you know, coloring the sprites and just how to control them and where to safely store them in memory and stuff like that. Now, I, I put some calculations on the screen here, but I didn't want to go over all this. I just wanted to kind of, since it's very basic stuff for me and hopefully for others here, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and alt start ordering this. Now, as soon as I throw a value in here, and these are all set to 255 by default anyway, I'm going to show you what, show you what happens here. Now, keep in mind, these squares are just similar to, um, and let me pause here a second. Okay, so I'm dangling the book to show you right here. You see these numbers going across 12268. This is the first defined area, which we're going to change over here in this corner. This is the second area in the third quarter. And as we keep going down to each memory location, 12288, 12289, 12290, 12291, we're just essentially just going sequentially and we're changing the sprite in that order as we're going across it. So hopefully that makes sense. You're just moving through each memory location, 
and you're starting at the top part of the sprite and moving all the way down until you get to the bottom of it. So that's what we're going to basically be doing is we're going to be going and we're going to be changing it. And then these are the memory values that we're going to use to control what's in that register. Remember, these are just the bits stored on for black and zero for off. And we just calculate them as according to what's in each row. And this thing's fading out, but I think that's about it for that. So we'll get started on that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw a zero on it. And as soon as I press this button, I mean, as soon as I press enter here, you won't see anything change yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on our memory bank here. Now, one thing's important to go back here in the 2040 is explaining how I came at this value 192. So essentially, since the sprite itself is made up of, well, I think, however they calculated this, 122 by 64, gives you the correct value for that memory location. So, for example, if we wanted to store it, let's say we've stored it in a strange memory like 49152, it would show you the value of that, and actually, um, that's not correct. I don't know why that looks like the way it does, but 896. So that would be 14 if we started storing it. 896, 895 would be 13 point whatever. Those are just some areas that have stored it before. 49152 is used for machine language. I thought maybe I could throw it in here, but I don't think you can store a sprite there or just miscalculating it wrong or something. But anyways, um, now what we're going to do, now that we understand that 12288 divided by 64, is 192, we're going to turn on that sprite for that area and you're going to see something magical happen here. Now we haven't done anything yet, but I'm going to throw in a value here to show you what's going on. Look, we got a line, just like I showed you earlier in that sprite example, we're now drawing from the left hand corner going across. So I'm going to basically use this book as a guide since if you look in the data statements here below that, those are the data statements that we're going to use to create this sprite. And I'm just going to create it real time and then later we'll put the program in here. But I wanted to show you guys this real time so you guys can see what's really going on behind the scenes. So let me just run this again. And then we're going to go ahead and just put this back on the screen here for a second so you can see it. And then next, we're going to go ahead with the next memory location. Now we put a 255 in that one. It originally has a zero, so I could just leave zeros in there. They really don't have anything in there. See how it turned off when I put the zero in there? That's because in that area, there's nothing turned on right now. But if I change this to a zero, it's still nothing. So what we're going to do is keep track of the next memory location, which will be this one. And that one actually has a zero because there's nothing in that upper left-hand corner for the place yet. But eventually, we're going to get to another line here, 126. And this starts drawing the top part of the head that we saw earlier. So I'm going to go over a few more here. Hopefully this is making sense. A zero, there's nothing there again. And i got to also keep track of where I am in the book. You can start to see the head just take shape there now. See how it's starting to take shape. Now we got the top part of the head there. I wish I had somewhere I could set this up and see it. I just realized what would probably benefit me more later um, would be having a stand or something to put my stuff on. I never thought of that until just now. But anyways, um, 122.97 is 2. And now you can see the rest of the sprite starting to appear on the screen. 122.98 is 0, so nothing's going to show there. 122.99 is 64. So I'm doing this real time again so you guys can see. Now you can simply do this in data statements, but I wanted to show it for people who need to see it. Myself, I'm a very visual learner, so I like to learn things visually. There's actually a 12 in this next one. Somehow that didn't look right. Let's double check here. It does show a 12 in there. Maybe it starts forming out that way. Maybe it does what I didn't think it did. And then there's a zero in the middle there. That's when I could put something in the center again. 302 is 48 and you can see the, the part of the head there I think we'll just go down to the eyes here and you can see his eyes there now so that's all I want to do is create the first part of the sprite so we can see him in memory there so see if I put him back over here you'll see he does not change or alter the background in any way he rides over the top so the sprite 
is allowed to pass over the top of the characters. It's contained in its own area in memory. So now we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to enter these data statements. I'm going to pause for that. Okay, so I'm back. So I entered the data statements. Now nothing's going to happen yet because we haven't read them in the memory. This is what this program above is going to do, these data statements. But I'm going to show you how to go ahead and clear these out if you ever need to clear your sprite. You just set it to 62 bytes and you find the memory location where you want to clear it. And you just add that axon so it adds on each individual location. You set it to zero and you next it and our sprite magically disappears because now there's no bits lit on the sprite. So now we can safely go ahead and start typing in the next lines here. I won't pause since this probably won't take very long. Gonna leave no spaces in it. We're gonna read the data. There's our new lines, and we run it, and he should reappear. And there's what exactly what this byte looks like. So now that we have finally have them on the screen, like I said, we can start doing some fun things with them. And like I said, each sprite is defined in its own memory location here. I put down here, these are where the color memory locations are stored. So if you need them, this will all be included on that GitHub. So we go here and we type poke53287, comma, two. We'll see a change red there. Three, cyan, according to whatever value is stored in that memory location. And that's according to that color chart I showed you in a video a few videos ago. Well, I copied it here for easier reference, even though it did something kind of weird. I kind of moved the screen down there, but you can see these are the colors and these are the memory locations where the data is going to be stored at. You see most of the colors there. And you can see that I got the number five added in here. So five is 2000. Um, actually, I think I'm looking at the wrong location here. One second. I had it on the, the shape memory. I meant to put it on the color memory. So here you can see the colors 53 to 87 and so on. And these are the colors. So I have five in here and that's color green. So if I put six in there, it's going to be blue. I think it'll be the same color as the background. You can kind of see it a little bit behind the, the data statements there. And then seven is yellow. There's actually more colors in this, but these are only set for the multicolor. So if I go in here further, I'll show you the rest of them because it has 16 colors. There's like a brownish. Another kind of a darker brown. And this one's kind of like a darker, brighter green. You can see that one a little bit better. 14 and then 15, I think it's the black. Or 15 is white, excuse me. If you want to set it black, you just set it to zero. And you can kind of see it's in the background. So I think we'll use 13 for the sprite color. Going to leave it stored on there because it'll reset it every time otherwise. Okay, so now that we know about the colors, the next thing we're going to learn about is how to move a sprite around on the screen. And to keep in mind, um, I created this chart here according to this is from Map in the Commerce 64. These are the memory locations and what each does. So 53248, which is sprite zero that we have currently on the screen, is stored in this memory location for his horizontal. X represents horizontal and Y represents vertical. So if I type in 53, you probably you saw me do this earlier, but I probably didn't explain it. This is the, um, the horizontal as we're moving him across the screen. He goes over to 255 until we cross the threshold, which I'll show you that in just a minute. And 53, 249, of course, controls the vertical. Oh, he's already at 100. So if I send him to 150, you'll see his vertical. Then 255, he'll be off the screen. Now about that, a sprite can only be so so far on the screen and so off the screen. Uh, I think that might be down here somewhere. Let me just pause for that. It's a little further ahead here, but it says right here, vertical positions go from 50 through 249, and horizontal positions go from 24 to 342. So notice I put him at 25, so he's basically up here off the screen somewhere. So if I set him probably to something like 45, you'll probably see him starting to peek through there a little bit. If I send him to like 40, he should be peeking halfway through. He's he's hiding behind the border is what he's doing essentially there. So you can see him a little bit behind the border there. And get him back down on the screen. The same thing with the, the 255. They start at 50. So if I set him to 50, actually not this one. If I set this one to 50, this is the, the horizontal. If I set this to 50, 
Actually, it doesn't seem right. 45. Let's set him to like 20. Maybe those values are off for some reason. There, he's kind of going behind the border a little bit there. So you can see he kind of slips behind the border. So that was for that part right there. Next part I was going to show you was how to move them on the screen. And here's a demonstration program, so I'll pause and I'll explain that. Okay, I had to alter those values. Those were used for Sprite 7, and that's if we were using Sprite 7, but we're messing with Sprite 0 for now. So you'll see them move down the screen there based on the vertical position. And those lines we just added, 85 and 98. If you wanted them to go farther, you could set this to 255 so you can travel farther down and off the screen. Okay, so I covered this, uh, the memory areas where he can move. Um, so next question is, how do we get him beyond the 255th position? And the book states that this is accomplished by borrowing a bit from another register, memory location 53264, to um, accomplish this feat. And the bits themselves control the specific sprites. Um, we kind of went over this, but the value must be poked in memory location 53264 for this to be accomplished. And here's an example of it right here. So what I'm going to do, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and back into the program here. And we're going to bring the sprite back on the screen, but we're going to turn off those lines 82, 85. I'm just going to erase them, make it easier. And just draw the sprite back on the screen so we can see them. Oh, I've got to position them on the screen. My bad. We'll just set them in the specific locations we had earlier to bring them back on the screen. And then now we're going to set that value to 53264,128. And actually, this is for Sprite 7, so I need to actually set this for Sprite 1 there. So now he's off the screen. You don't see where he is because he's actually on, he's actually beyond the 255th position here. So if we move him here, you'll see him move in that other area since we've now set the higher bit. So see how he's basically inside of that area there? That's um, basically calculating it as taking the whole width of the screen, which I don't remember if I know how width the screen is, might by 255 or something. But anyways, he's traveling in, beyond the 255th position. So if we had to calculate this in this area, and we said 0 to like 50 or something like that, or 40, let's see if that'll do it. Actually, I need it farther than that. Maybe 80? Something like 90 or something might do it. To get him off the screen, that's good enough. And then we figured how far that is from his initial location, plus 90 will tell us how far he's traveled. So he's traveled 345 positions over there. And if we want to get him back, we just set 53264 to 0, which you just saw down here. And these are also the, the most significant bit positions for each sprite and the values that you put into it. Memory location to move that sprite over past the 255th position. So going back to this, you know, to set it back to 0. And there he is, he's back on the screen, because now he's back on this side of the screen, which goes from 0 to 255. And here's another example. They, I think this is the original example. Let me see. I think this is, yeah, this is just the original example. And here's how to control the horizontal expansion, because you can also expand the size of the sprites. And these are the registers stored for 53271 for each individual sprite. So if I go in here and I want to change sprite 0, which is the one we have right now, it says you put a 1 in there, and it should double its position, just like that. Likewise, the same value here, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 7, would be entered in for sprites um, 2 through 7. And here's how you change them horizontally. Once again, putting that 1 in, and the chart for it. Now we got a pretty giant sprite there. Looks like we're missing part of his head there, too. Probably cut off some data somewhere. And... Here's some example they want me to type in. I'm going to do that. So before we run out of example, I also forgot to mention earlier the 12288 when we are poking those values in memory here. 
here's the memory register that we were doing it into, so 12288, and it goes from 0 to 62. So that's all we were doing earlier is I was poking in real time in immediate mode to show you the sprite as I was drawing it, but that's how the, the program does it. So now we're going to run this example, which is going to put several sprites on the screen here. You'll see two of them intersecting with each other. And I mentioned we had collision, so we don't have a collision detection turned on. Um, I'll probably try to set an example with that to kind of show you what it's like when you have it set. This is going to kind of keep repeating in a pattern, but that's the first part of this video. Oh, and also before I forget, I was going to show you how to load this in the sprite pad. I did mention that in this example, so I might as well get to that next. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to attempt to create a sprite here. Just to take one from one of these examples, um, a car, airplane or something. I think I like the little car, I'll probably do the car. And then we're going to transport this into our program so we can see it. Now this is in multicolor too, so I'll need to explain multicolor. Multicolor is basically um, basically allowing more colors into the sprite. You can see it, it can have up to four different colors at any one time on the sprite. You're never going to see any more than that on the sprite unless you set you know rasters on them or something they're always going to be contained within those sections but it, it puts enough color on the sprite to make it you know useful and interesting so we'll go back to the little car there so what I've also got on here and I've showed this before but it's been a while is some called a d64 editor which you can get online at their website we're going to basically create a sprite here and we're going to create um, a d64 file in here that we can implement into our regular D64 files so we can get the sprite data out. And I know this is going to get a little complicated, but I know in this section, this is all about sprites, and I really wanted to show you everything I know about the sprites and how to make it easier to get your sprites on the screen instead of having to go through all those extensive data statements. So this video may go over a little bit, so excuse me for that. So we're first going to go in here to Sprite Editor, or Sprite Pad, and we're going to basically go to Export. And then we're going to need to set a memory location. Now remember, ours was set to 122.88. So I paused to show you the calculator on the screen. So right here, you can see 122.8 in Decimo is 3,000 in hex. And hex is just a way of calculating numbers times 16 plus a number or whatever to arrive at the value. Um, that could be a totally another video. But anyways, we're going to go here. We're going to type 3,000. So we want to start it at 122.22. 12,288 for our sprite location. And we're going to save it in a file here. And we're going to call this one Fun Sprites. I originally created Fun Sprites 0, but I wanted to show you the step by step. So now we have Fun Sprites in here. And so now what we need to do is we need to look it up here so we can get it in here. Also, I skipped a step. In order to get this in here, first we have to create a D64 file. We're going to just, um, we could actually, we could drag the original in here too. I just thought we could probably do that. Um, so let me pause here again. Okay, I had to go relocate the folder. So here's the original folder where we say, well, our game data. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this file here, and we're going to move it over into this editor. And you'll see it instantly as I moved it in here, it created, this is a D64 file. Now we haven't saved it, so we still got to put the data in here. We're going to do that and create a, a directory for it. But next, we're going to basically take our sprite file, which I have underneath here, and we're going to drag it. And this is just where we saved it in the location from the sprite. So wherever you stored it in the folders where you want to get it, and then we're going to drag it in here. And you'll see it appeared right there underneath at the bottom there. So now we've got them all in here. We want to go in here and click, click on Save. And you see it saved it to the file here. Now I'll show you how I, that's proven in a minute. Okay, so I had to go back and um, move a file around, but basically what you're doing is you're getting that file in the same folder where your Vice C64 is. And then um, I had a little trouble. I realized it was actually saving to the original location, but I'll show you that it works and what it's actually going to do. And like I said, because it's, it's in the file now, so it's able to read it. So to not get too technical or advanced, basically what this memory location 57812 is doing here, I'll list it on the screen. It's a faster way of loading your data in the memory once you've created it into this D64 editor. So if you look at these memory locations 780 and 781 and 72 here, you see the 0 and 780, that's the low byte, and the 48, that's the high byte. You multiply by 256 and you notice our number 12288, which is exactly where it's going to store this data. And so I'll run this and show you it's going to create the sprites. They won't be multicolored until we activate them, but I'll show you how to get them all on the screen here.
This may be the final example right here. This one's not actually too bad. Okay, you'll see them both move in there. Now, they're in standard mode right now, so if you want to change them, we can. But first, before we change them, I wanted to show you. Um, these are in sprites. Uh, we could set these to sprites 2 and 3, by the way. But the program is anyway set up to, to create them for um, sprites 6 and 7, I believe it is. So we'll alter these um, with memory location 2046. And then we're going to remember the original value was 192. Now, if we change it to 193, now I'm going to minimize this, get this out of the way here to show you. Watch what happens here. See, what it's doing is it's picking up the next sprite here in sprite pad. So as we go through each of these in memory now, we're now pointing at these new areas. If I click on them, you'll see them each time there. This is basically loaded in a whole set of sprites. Now, if you want to turn on multicolor mode, we set 53, 276 to 7 to turn on all sprites. Actually, let me just double check that. Okay, so for some reason, strange dream that's yet to be discovered, I had to go ahead and redo this with just the sprites that I created. Uh, the ones in that project example didn't work, but you can see I've loaded them in. And what I did is I just basically dragged the new file in here. I created it here. If you need to see it, I went to export, and I set this to 3000 for 122.88. And then I just created the new sprite file here, which I called My Sprites. This one right here. And I was able to export them into this, this folder. So if you basically go there and you create them and you export them, I'm not going to do it here. You want to save them in the folder again. Make sure to drag them to here, and then you're going to save it again, just like usual. So it gets appended to the folder. So if you go here to attach disk image drive 8 and click on it, you'll see that they now appear down here at the bottom. So as long as you have them in here and you've attached them, you can actually scroll through them. So now that we have them on the screen here, oh, hope it didn't just crash the image. I'm going to leave that one on the screen for now. Trying to figure out something here a second. Okay, guys, after a long time of you know working out this program, you can see basically what time it is there. It's already 8.23. Um, yeah, I came up with this example for randomization and also for showing you how to animate sprites. I'll go over and I'll explain it here in just a minute. But here's the program. Yeah, I'm just going to run it. And you'll see we got some weird animations going on here. Uh, these are originally from the um, program stuff that I had created. You can see there's a real wild one in the middle. This is just randomizing a shape pointer and just picking a section of memory and positioning right to it. And it's also moving the sprite around a little bit. And you can see these ones are kind of moving down. And this guy's just moving across the screen. So yeah, we got four different sprites moving around there. I was going to get the fifth one on the screen here, but for some reason I couldn't get it to work. So for now, I just thought you might find it interesting to see the little animations going on. And there's no collision detection or anything, but you can just see them moving around and some weird stuff going on there. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Um, we'll see what the next adventure brings here. Before I forget also, I was going to go over the code with you. So what I've done is I've added in some newer lines here. Obviously, you can see line 12 says, if peak 122.95 equals 128, then 16. And what this is saying is if we've already loaded this line right here, we've already peaked into this memory location of 122.95, which means somewhere here we've already read this data. So 122.95 is like counting these in sections of three. So 122.88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 195 would be that digit right there at the top of this head. And that means that that's in uh, location 128. Then it means if we read in the sprite and we re read this line already, no need to go ahead and reread it again. We'll skip it and we'll just move down. So the first time it's always going to execute line 15, but after that it won't execute it again to make it a little bit faster. This line right here enables the multicolors for four different sprites on the screen. This line here um, enables the sprites also that all four of them will show up. This one right here is sprite color 1, so this is coloring in a sprite, and this is coloring in sprite 2, and we're reading the shape data into each sprite. I did this down at the bottom of the screen here. You see it says for x equals 0 to 3, read sh code 2040 plus x comma sh next. And if I go into the program here real quickly, I'll show you the data statements here at the bottom, or actually in the middle of the program here. 
Uh, right here it says 200, data 194, 196, 200, 206. So essentially all we're doing is we're looking here to see which shape to get. It starts at 192, so we don't want 192, we don't want 93, but we want this guy first. So we're going to use that guy first, and then that's how it reads in the first data. And then the next one we're going to read in is 200, so 196, 97, 98, 99, 200. So we're next going to read in this little snake guy. And then the next one we're going to read is 206. So we got, um, what was that one, 196, or is that 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 198, 99. So 200 is going to be reading this guy, because this is going to be the guy walking across the screen. So we got that guy read in right there. And the next we're going to read was 206, but I couldn't get the work. It's supposed to be this guy right here. Okay, now let's go back and relist the program. <clears throat> okay, so once we read in the shape data, we're next going to change the size of a sprite. And actually, this one is not corresponding to anything because I haven't turned on any specific sprites. So we can just ignore line 46 for now. I can make them bigger by setting all their priorities bigger. But for now, I didn't want to do that. So so we'll get rid of that one. And then these are all the positions. This is position sprite 1, which you can see down here. It pokes into memory location 53250 and 53251. That's sprite 1's horizontal and vertical. And then this one right here gets a position for Y1 to set position for the sprite Y1, which actually might not even be used in this program. Let me see. I originally had this one, and I changed it, so you probably don't even need Y1 in there. I think I took it out and just use the YS instead, so I could take that one out. No harm done there. <clears throat> then next, we're just going to reposition the sprite. That's that random sprite you saw changing on the screen and moving around in little increments to sprite position 100 for, vert for his position, horizontal position, and his vertical position at 100 to keep him kind of stationary on the screen and just moving based on a random value. And then after we position the sprites here, we're going to start moving sprite 1 here with the YS. So this YS is incrementing down here. You'll see YS equals YS plus 1. So first time it's going to set it to 100 until it gets to this line. Then it's going to start increasing the value each time to get the sprite to move down the screen. And that's getting both of them to move. So it's moving two different sprites here. You've seen them both coming down. They're both coming down. But not both of their um, X positions are moving in the same place. Notice X0, for example, um, is right here. X0 equals 0 plus 1. And I originally set this to go off the screen, so I'll probably have to change this. This doesn't really matter, but it's just saying if it's at 255, reset this position back to zero. And that just gets him moving down the screen. And then we have uh, the next sprite for um, X2. And X2 right here is actually going backwards. So they, you see that one going down the screen like that? That's him moving backward in, the, in a backwards direction. And say if he's less than 40, then we set him to 255. Again, we're not setting the most significant bit there. And S2, actually, let's see, um, X2, I got X2, oh, X2 is the one moving backward, I believe. Um, yeah, that's the one moving backward. That's the alien walking across the screen here. So I just set his um, backward motion at minus 2 to make a little move a little bit faster. And if he's less than 40, set him back to 255, so he kind of flips here. But his most significant bit is not being set, but we could set that if we needed to. It just requires a little bit more thought process to, to get them to pass beyond the 255, so I wasn't going to play with that a whole lot here. Um, we'll probably do that in future videos. And then down here, we're getting the YS increase. It's seen each time, as I said, that gets both of the sprites moving down the screen and keeps the other guy stationary since his position only stays at 160. But his X2, his, his horizontal is moving. That's why you see the alien walking across the screen, but you didn't see him going down the screen. He's stationary at 160. And then line 220 here, I'll go to there and show you what that does. You saw it down here earlier, so I said 220 there. You'll see it sets, it creates an uh, R2, actually, is that right, 220? Let me see. I thought I was missing a value there somewhere. Actually, this needs to go to 215. I just realized that 180 needs to go to 215. So anyways, 215 is getting the random values here. So it's picking a random value for 1 between 0 and the 4, picking a random value for 2, 0 to 4, Pick a random value of C3 between 195 plus 5, which is 200, to get an increment of 5 each time. And it's picking a random, random value of S4 um, between 0 and 255. And this is the one that randomly puts the shape data in. You can see up here S4 is changing the shape data. R1 here is just an incrementer I set up 
kind of a make it look like it's kind of moving on and you know kind of in its own direction so if you set one like if it goes in here and it finds a one in the random value then it's going to increase uh, the x value by three for our, was our third sprite there and it's also going to increase the y value by three and do the same thing here if it finds a two in here as it goes up and back and forth to the line then it's going to move in backward and it's going to move them up. So you see them kind of moving up like that. So it kind of controls this diagonal movement. The same thing for R2, except he's moving Y3, it's moving him down, or I'm sorry, up the screen and back, so or forward. So he's going like that. And then R2 is moving Y3 up, or I'm sorry, down the screen and moving him backwards. So basically, as he's going backward, he's going like this. He's going down the screen. So it's kind of moves in both directions there. And then 53290 sets the, the color, so you've seen the, the color changing on the random shape. So that's how I get that sprite to kind of move around the screen and everybody else is just moving by the, the regular values. So I know I went over that kind of quickly, but I'm running out of time here. I don't like to make these over 45 minutes. Um, but I wanted to show you that some, some of the fun you can do with sprites. They're moving very slowly too because of basic. You can't really get them going very quickly unless you increment the values. Like you see this guy moving a little bit faster than these guys. Um, that's where machine language comes into play, you know, and implementing that into your program will make it more useful. So, so anyways, guys, I just want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed this session. And as always, please like, favorite, subscribe to this channel. I need all your subscriptions I can get. Uh, really would like to get this channel moving and growing so we can get the Commodore 64 out there. I've got some great things planned and just looking forward to a great machine language project, you know, and just really getting together some great people and just having a great, great time, you know, pretty much. And I'm totally back into the scene here, as you already see. Um, I'm not going away anywhere. Uh, just to contest it, I recently just won an eBay order for some more Commodore 64 discs. So essentially, I'm going to be getting more like this. And then there's actually two stacks of them, and there's a joystick and some cartridges included. So it wasn't a bad deal. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, please join me next time. And let's keep the word great in the comment 64 because we know it's great. Thank you for watching.